Hey, Chili with Chili Cruises here on the Cruise Amigos show from London. We do this every Sunday about this time and uh, real excited about today for a special guest. But before I get started, I got to introduce my partners in crime and corruption. The, the guy over there with the little thinning hair on top and the big bin in the background or whatever that is, that's Pete from Cruises for Solos. Yep, I want to uh, say hi. How's say hi, Pete. Hello, guest, yes. I'm from London, as you can tell. And yeah. Sue, Sue, one quick question. Are you from London? You're West London? I am in West London right now, as Ch we speak. Yes. Chiswick? Yeah, that's where I live. I yep. was born and bred in Chiswick. I'm a Fantastic. Chiswick boy. I'll talk about that later on. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> All right, now down <laughs> below, at least on my screen, I have no idea what it is on yours. That's John Reitmeyer. He's up in Minnesota. And what some people might think that's a palm tree in the background. John is our resident pot farmer. <laughs> Believe it or not, he grows pot. Now, he doesn't call it that. He calls it cannabis. But uh, hell to me, he grows pot. Now, he says he doesn't smoke it. Don't. But he grows this stuff and he makes pot oil and he rubs it in his hair and and that's why he gets this uh, this the dew that he's got and he puts it on his arm he's a pot farmer folks john reitmeyer from minnesota happy, wait a minute happy to see you happy to see you well thank you and it's, i'm really excited Our, we have a very special guest today um she she is an extraordinary writer uh, she's written a bunch of books. She's written hundreds of articles on travel and cruises from literally all around the world. She's also editor, uh, cruise editor for the Sunday Times over there in London. Yay. Big time writer. So with no <laughs> further ado, let me introduce Sue Bryant. Glad to have you with the Cruise Amigo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And now you got you got some hands too. All right, so everybody will know we we have a you know we have a serious question we got to ask Sue, uh, but that's got to come later on because I've got to get a, an important question out of the way. Sue has been on a bazillion cruises. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> now, my understanding is you once upon a time got on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, <laughs> and like most of us do, you immediately go to your cabin. Drop your carry-ons and I head up to the buffet. pool deck to the, the bar buffet. and have a cocktail. Goes to the buffet. Now, be nice. Yep. Maybe. But you opened the door to a cabin and what did you find? I found a drunk in my bed. Nice. <laughs> Was he at least a good looking drunk? No. Oh. I was an angry drunk. <laughs> I mean, and you've got to remember, I'd flown across the Atlantic to Miami. I'd walk, you know, we'd queue up to check in. I'd walk miles to get to my cabin. It was the biggest ship I'd ever been on. Finally get there with my little wheelie bag, open the door. And, you know, the cabin's normally all sparkling and, the, you know, light and lovely. It was dark. And there was this man on the bed. And <laughs> I sort of screamed, as one would, <laughs> rather than being smart about it and said hello and I, I just like ah! <laughs> and slammed the door went all the way back all the way back to the reception miles queued up again and said there's a man in my bed and um they said oh <laughs> and they rang and they called and they 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 sort of said no he doesn't want to leave what do I do <laughs> was he on the last cruise yeah he'd been on the um it was the launch of a ship and he'd been on the shakedown there was a travel agent's shakedown the night before and he'd enjoyed the hospitality, you know, a, a little bit. A lot. <laughs> and had uh, he just apparently just decided that he didn't wish to leave, so he'd stayed in the bed. <laughs> well, yeah, there we are. <laughs> shame I'm not sure what I would have done. They should have had the electronic keys, not been able to kick you in a new key. Shame. It was a new ship. It was a new. I mean, it was quite a long time ago. It was a new ship. It was everything was new, new systems. Anyway, they um. Finally, we walked all the way back up to the cabin and they sort of confronted him and said, you have to leave. And he said, well, I'm not leaving. <laughs> what do you do with me? He's just like... <laughs> so um, in the end, they gave me another cabin, but the words were had in the corridor. And I, oh, God, 
But it was really yeah. scary. <laughs> you walk into your cabin and there's this body in the bed. <laughs> Do you think he's still there, Sue? <laughs> <laughs> Years on. <laughs> Around the world cruise. What a great oh, way of doing maybe it. he's watching now. Maybe he remembers me. I don't know. <laughs> if you're out there if you remember sue and you're in that bed please say hi <laughs> all right now kind of a serious question what comes first for you normally a cruise or a trip and then you write an article about it or do you have an article in mind and take the trip or the cruise oh it's it's both it's a mixture Okay. So sometimes, like if, for example, if there's a new ship launching, we know we're going to cover it and we want an exclusive. We have to be first. We have to find an angle. So then I would approach the cruise line and say, get us on board. And the, believe me, there have been some dramas with that, too. Like, for example, um, Queen Mary 2, straight out of refit, all these German passengers had cruised over from Hamburg and were just all walking around in their anoraks and walking boots about to get off. And I'm there in a ball dress with a photographer posing on the staircase you know <laughs> having a photo shoot and i had to write my story by midday so that's so that's when the story comes first but then sometimes if i'm offered something i'll yeah i'll, I'll say to my editor please can i go please 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 and uh, we'll see usually yes but we always have to have a story angle we always have to have a reason to do the trip it wouldn't just be like i want to go to barbados we'll do a piece on the caribbean it's got to be a a real a, a decent story because our readers are looking to book cruises they want information they they want what's new they want what's interesting i've got i've got a question um chili um yeah. so you work obviously as chili mentioned you work for the sunday times how I'm did sorry? it start how did I'm it sorry? start how did it start working for the sunday times how did you become a journalist working for um, them well i've been writing about cruising for 20 years and quite randomly, 20 years ago, I mean, completely randomly, I used to write about business travel. Um, so completely randomly just got offered this job on a cruise magazine and um, as an editor. And I sort of thought very little of cruising then. I thought, not anything that's interested me. But obviously, as you all know, it's addictive. You get hooked. And things progressed and one magazine to another and then freelance. And then, you know, I've been writing about the industry for 20 years now. And then the Sunday Times asked if I would like to cover some cruising from them and it all took off from there. Wow. I mean, cruising is a big deal now for our readers. They, uh, they're, they're, we've, we've got the ones that love it and there are lots that love it, but there's always a few funny ones who <laughs> don't quite get it. <laughs> but yeah, most, most of them are, you know, we've got a very, very enthusiastic cruise following. How, how much of your writing would you say is reporting and how much of it is critiquing? Mm, it's hard to say because I'm actually, because I'm freelance, so I write for a, I don't write, obviously, for any other newspapers, but I write for websites and things, too. So in a normal year, this is not a normal year, in a normal year, probably half and half. Oh, OK. I so might be reviewing a ship, doing mm -hmm. big, long thousands of words of very detailed review. And then I might be writing about a beautiful sunset, like the one you have behind you. You know, it, it, it's but yeah. <laughs> so we, we, want, we want your true gut feelings about Richard Branson's entree into Ooh. the cruising line. I'm sure you've read Emma's uh, went viral. Emma's cruising isn't just for old people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were on the same trip. Yeah, we were on the same I, I expected I mean, that you were, and so was Pete. You know, he. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Got on her. Uh, Chili and I were in a 12 foot tugboat behind. <laughs> Watching. The wake was awful. It was terrible. Were they, you they, there in Dover, were you? I'm sorry? Were you there in Dover for that night in Dover? You were no. just watching? Because it was the most horrendous storm. I mean, it was so... Yeah. Oh, we, we were getting the reports in real time from Pete. So, so but no, they didn't invite us. Uh, Richard doesn't even allow me on his airplanes anymore. So. Oh, um, you would have been invited when it got to Miami, but then everything went wrong. So. It did. Everything went... Yeah. Well, and it was supposed to go to Miami direct, you know. It was supposed to be a cruise to Miami. I and I was going to meet Pete down there, and we had all these plans and everything unraveled. So, yeah, I mean, I thought I thought there were bits, there were elements of the ship that were good. I thought, obviously, if you were into nightlife, which I'm not, because I'm quite boring, um, the the nightclub was pretty amazing. The theatre show, well, it was not a theatre because everything's not, not a theatre, not a buffet, not an anything. That was pretty good. 
Um, I thought the swimming pool was tiny. <laughs> and now we have to socially distance. And apparently in the EU, we can have like, was it four square meters per person? So that's basically one person in the pool. They need yeah. a bigger pool on those ships. But the ship's back in Genoa now, and I don't know what they're doing to it. Yeah, it hopefully making a bigger pool. Because Maybe. the jacuzzi is bigger than the pool on that ship. <laughs> so, if you were kind of a nasty writer, you could. You were saying, you know, it's it's not it's the, there's not a a showroom, there's not a buffet, there's not a. You could sum it up then by saying it's not a cruise ship. Uh, there was a buffet. They yeah, they just tried to pretend there wasn't. There was totally mm. a buffet. There was exactly food carts. Hello, it's exactly the same as what you'd get on Celebrity, where you've got all those different nice salad bars and different food stations. It was just a way of. Sure. trying to be trendy and everything but i mean there were some nice bars there was some i could see for younger people and for those short cruises out of miami i think it would work but personally for me i like space i like quiet um i'm probably a bit old for it i don't know and i mean the hammer from balcony was nice too but it was it was blowing like a force 10 or something so i sort of looked at my hammock and that was it <laughs> sue and myself were both on top deck like nutters trying to video oh, yeah. with this incredible storm weren't we sue you know yeah. incredible storm blowing trying to get some kind of view it's absolutely incredible it really was the, the wind was so bad that you could mm. the gangway was closed i mean they couldn't actually get people on the ship and this is bizarre you've got one night to see this ship yeah. and loads and loads of people milling around in the terminal and the covid thing had just begun so but there was lots yeah. of questionnaires and things but yeah. i mean i had to get on i think i had to get on the ship at two at 12 and i had to write my piece by two so i had to sort of strong arm my way onto the ship and then i wandered around the top deck and i was sort of being blown over and there's this howling gale i probably bumped into you didn't i you did i <laughs> think we're the only ones up there so to be honest with you or everyone else was down the bottom having a drink you know being yes, sensible yeah party and there's me going live on top how's the feeling thing? about the ship in on your side of the, the pond though are people looking forward to it not so much it's, oh. i think it's it, i'm allowed at to this drink point it's pretty now. expensive there yes, you go expensive yeah cheers well, you say it's expensive guys i've been watching the prices with virgin to be fair to them um their prices have come down hugely you know because they got the new ship for next year around europe as well yeah. And yeah. the prices have really come down a lot. So I think they realise you need to get people on it. Now, Sue, I think you're quite experienced about that kind of weather, aren't you? Because I, I saw a little bit about your first cruise in the Irish Sea. Am I correct? Oh, my God. What have you been reading? <laughs> Am I right? Oh, that was an epic trip. Tell yeah. us about it. <laughs> it was, well, it was when I just, it was, well, my son is 20 now and he was a baby then so it's 20 years ago and i just got this job on a cruise magazine i had no idea i didn't know anything about cruising at all and obviously my biggest fear like every newcomer is oh will i be seasick anyway cunard um had just um taken on or renamed a ship coronia and i went to the naming the renaming of this ship in liverpool and cunard have a famous and legendary christmas media lunch where many celebrities come and everybody gets madly drunk so this year it was on 1999, it was on a ship sailing from Liverpool to Southampton in December when there are big winds and big gales. And um, the minute we left Liverpool, we hit this fourth 12. <laughs> oh Everybody was sick, I was sick, I had a baby with me, the crew was sick, it was awful. The, the Cunard Christmas lunch was abandoned because people were just keeling over. Oh my God, and I, I mean, even to this day, when I see people who were on that trip and we say, oh, do you remember the Coronia and the fourth 12 and how ill we were? And it didn't put me off though. That was it, the start. Yeah, oh God, it was, it, was, it was really, really grim. The whole ship was kind of doing that awful corkscrew thing. I'm sorry, anyone who's watching this, don't be put off because you won't be seasick. No, and, 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 I had yeah. quickly, and, and Pauline, uh, uh, Pauline, you're watching this. We will answer that question in a little while as well. I just want to talk about I Sue's just... cruising beforehand. So Chili, back to you, please, my friend. Oh. I, yeah, by the way, I I started cruising in 1978. Uh, can't remember it so long. He can't so remember back, it. You know, it's, it's, I'm put old. A, put a sticker back, on your computer, Chili. Put a sticker. Back in the, it, it's, it says it right here next to the camera. It says 78. I just have to remember to look up there, and I forget to oh, look. That, that was your bar mitzvah. That was your bar mitzvah. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, back in those days, I mean, you know, you got you. It could be clouds outside, and you get thrown back and forth on the ships. Rounded bottoms. They had rounded bottoms in. They had. There was no such thing as azipods. 
I didn't even know what an azopod was until what 18 months ago. <laughs> and I've had to report on azopods now like 40 times. Flippers, flippers, yeah. army flippers. All well, right, so going back in time a little bit, you were on a kayak. Pete has a picture of this one. <laughs> a Venice. kayak in Venice. There I am. Oh, look at that. The Rialto Bridge. Oh. Yes, the Rialto Bridge in the background. Yeah. Now, was that in the, uh, in, that was still in the stinky water days, was it not? They're not stinky waters. I, I drank a fair amount of that water that day. I'm <laughs> tell the tales. So. Chilly. How embarrassing. Chilly. <laughs> It was, it was a few years ago, but kayaking's been banned now in the canals, which is yeah. really depressing because it was it was one of the best trips I've ever done. It was amazing, you know, to see Venice, where I've been many times, from that level, from the water. And you can see how big the gondolas are behind me. Yeah. And when you have to squeeze past a gondola, they're kind of looking down at you saying, who are you? Why are you here, you weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was amazing. But it was I was traveling with a friend who... Um, spent the whole day at the Cipriani lying by the pool drinking cocktails and we met we met at the airport that night and I've got salt hair and a scarlet face and crusted salt everywhere and I'm like get out of the plane and he's like really chill <laughs> a lovely day and I was I could barely walk I was so tired but it was it was just the best way to see Venice and if it ever comes back I'd be straight back there. Yeah well, they say uh, Venice this this whole pandemic thing has been good to Venice. Is the, it, everything's cleaned up now. I mean, the well, water yeah, is not fine. much better than it's been in years. Apparently, so, yes, the canals are cleaner, yes. and yeah. Yeah, Yes, so sorry to interrupt you, Chile. Uh, do you think that they may bring kayaking back in Venice? Because Chile is coming over next year, oh. and we're going to be cruising from Venice, and I want to get Chile on a kayak, yeah? So, members, if you want Chile to go on a kayak, please put a thumbs up. Please say you want to go. Do you think they're going to bring it back? <laughs> I'd sink a damn kayak. <laughs> he, he, he needs a biak. He would need a biak. <laughs> might be better. And, and, and I also got to ask Sue. Two because, kayaks put together, a biak. <laughs> like a raft. Yeah. I mean, do you think they're still going to keep allowing cruise ships into Venice? Do you think that's going? Do you think that might no, change? I don't think so. I think I think the pressure is so much that I think it will change. And I have to say. I mean, I'm lucky I've cruised in and out of Venice a few times and it is the most beautiful view, but I have to say I probably encourage it to be changed. So, I mean, cruise passengers can still enjoy Venice and do everything, but the waves that the ships create along the Geodeca and, and the, the antipathy from the locals is, is just begun, it's getting too much. If, if there's a better way round and a better way to do it, then I think, I think for the sake of over tourism, I think it should be changed. Yeah. There are other places where I think cruise ships are blamed for over tourism, which I think is unjustified. But Venice, possibly just that sight of the big ships is just too much, especially after the accident um, when one ship crushed a small river ship, which I was meant to be on the small river ship. <laughs> you got away with that one then sue but do you yeah. think it might just be some of the bigger ships at their stop and they yeah. allow some of the, for instance we're booked on the norwegian dawn you know for next year chile and myself we're hoping john's going to come over as well and some of our members may want to join us as well do you it's not the dawn is not the biggest ship in the norwegian so do you think that the Dawn will still be allowed to sail in, but they're banned the bigger ships, or will it be just all cruise ships? I, I think, to be honest, I think the Dawn still counts. In the minds of the Venetians, the Dawn would still count as a, quite a big ship because it towers above the buildings. I think it's the small ones that can that don't have to go into the um, Stazione Maritime, the ones that can go alongside, like the river boats and the small Silver Seas and Seabourns and things, they might be allowed in. But the others, I mean, you can still have the experience of Venice. I don't think, you. okay, you miss out on that great trip but then just do that on a on a water bus instead do it on a vaporetto and you can still see the view you, you won't be looking down on it but you'll still then i'll be writing lots of pieces about how to look down on venice which tower to climb and you can do that <laughs> so what would you recommend for chili and me to do in venice and hopefully john apart from that i would recommend for you to throw away your map throw away your google map and well kayaking if you wish but and walk and lose yourselves and wander around the, the back streets or the back canals and just um, see where you end up. 
because that's always how you see the best bits of Venice. Get straight away from the crowds, go away, away from Rialto, away from San Marco, do that in the evening when everybody's gone. I love Venice. I mean, it's it's so touristy, but I love it so much. I've been going there since I was like seven years old, so I love it. That's, Gilly, now that's before the way I ask I like the question travel. for Pauline, uh, just go back about, I'll, just, I'll leave it for you very quickly, Chile, then I'm going to ask a question from Pauline as well. Okay. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, Sue, I'm going to put this on the screen. This is a bit of a more of a serious question. Um, Pauline asked this. She says, to, she liked, I would like to know what new procedures will be in place in this pandemic. Will the pools be open? Will the Caribbean be open to cruise ships in 2020? Will we have to wear face masks? How will a seat in a lounge theatre yeah. be? I'm travelling with a friend who's never cruised before. And so she's obviously worried about that experience. So that's one of the questions I do see a lot of people asking how things will be on a cruise ship, you know, when they do get going again. What, yeah, what I mean, the face mask thing is is interesting because um, Hertie Gruten set sail in, um, in Norway a couple of weeks ago and they don't do face masks because in Norway it's not recommended to wear a face mask. It's not insisted on. I mean, the same here at the moment. If you're sailing in a country or territory where people are wearing face masks, I expect you would be asked to wear one on board. But I mean, the reality is on a ship, how can you do that? You're not gonna sit around the pool in a face mask and you're not gonna be in the restaurant in a face mask or in the bar. So I think what ships will do is work much harder on the social distancing. They'll be working on things like the one, a one-way system around the ship and different sittings for dinner. Um, in the theater, I imagine, and I hope that they'll be doing things like groups. So if you're in a group of two, you'll have a seat either side of you and there'll be many, many more performances and the shows will be much shorter. So for the friend who's never cruised, they they don't really know any different and they probably wouldn't think this is weird. For someone who's cruised before, they might think, oh, this is a bit different. But I think the experience will still be good. The one thing I'm not quite sure about is this, because these new EU recommendations came out last week, is about the swimming pool. I mean, we all like to dunk in the pool, especially in the Caribbean, uh, where it's really hot. And if you've really got to have social distancing in the pool, which you will have to have, do you take turns? Do you get a, a little alert on your phone when it when it's your turn to get in, even if you're at breakfast at the time? I mean, that's the one thing I'm not so sure about. But the the cruise lines are working so hard to sort this out. You know, there's been a lot of abuse about how rubbish it all is and how it's not going to work. But I think they really, really are trying hard. So certainly for the friend who's cruising, it will be, oh, this is lovely. <laughs> so, no, it'll work. I mean, look, we're going to pubs here. I don't know what it's like for you to yeah. over there. But I went to the pub last night and it was it was felt normal. Everything is different, but it still feels normal. And I think cruising will be like that. See, for Chile and I, because of our age and we're in a couple of different risk groups, I've, I've been sequestered since March 15th. Yep. I live on a farm. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law live here. They do the shopping. I'm working hard because I'm in the computer business and I have business and we have uh, the cannabis business here on the farm. And we also have another farming operation and I'm in other kinds of businesses. But I literally go between this farm and another place and that's it. I have seen no one churches on Sunday morning on the computer. I've yeah. not been in a grocery store. I've not been in a restaurant. I've not been in a bar. I've not been in a clothing store. I've not hung out with my friends. I've, we've had two little family gatherings outside where everybody's six feet apart. And it's I've not hugged anybody. I've oh, not, that's really good. I, well, yes, but I mean, I'm, that's just that's where that's yeah. where it is. So you know, on the one hand, I'm just dying to get back on my favorite ship, the Epic. Yeah. But on the other hand, like you just mentioned, I can't imagine if the halls are going to be one way and my my cabin's, you know, three doors back and I'm going to have to go all the way up, all the way across, down the one way and back to get to my, this is. I'd do is, it though, wouldn't you? I would do it. I mean, to get back. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Understand. I'm totally in the agreement that we have to do this to fight the virus. I'm totally yeah. on deck with everything. I, yeah. It's just that it's the bizarreness of what we're doing. I go to get pizza. Uh, I'll go in and make a run for pizza and parts and things. And, you know, and then the tire man comes out, they know me and, you know, the, the, the broken tires in the back of my truck and he waves at me and they go in and they get it and they, they just put it on my bill. I mean, I don't sign for anything. I don't do anything. The pizza guy comes out, opens the other side door, slides the pizza in and I come home. Um, 
but I just, it, it's going to be to, to make all of that work on a cruise ship. We're just mulling it over all the time. All of they will though. They'll make it work. They have to make it work. And also the part of the question was November, 2020. I mean, they're, a lot of them are supposed to be starting again in October, November, and it's kind of borderline. But I hope very much that the big ships get back. They are beginning to in Europe, so I really hope. Are you, you booked know, on anything soon? Sorry? Have you, are you booked on anything coming up? Have you got any cruises? I am. I'm going, I am going on a cruise in August, but a tiny weenie ship, the only one sailing in the Greek islands on variety cruises. And it's a tiny thing, but they've said every day you'll have your temperature your blood oxygen checked, you know, multiple questionnaires every day, got to isolate for a night in Athens before we go. So, but yeah, I'm doing it. Wow. And if you oh, fail, you walk, if you fail, you walk the plank. <laughs> <laughs> you leave the ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. All right. Now here's a, here's a question for you. You're, you're in the same boat I'm in as far as what we want to do. But knowing what's going on in, in my country right now, yeah. would you fly over here and go to Miami to get on a on a cruise ship? No. I mean, we can't anyway because we're not allowed. Well, you don't yeah, want I'm to. not allowed to come your way either. But I know. That that, <laughs> That's I what it is. Probably not. I think I mean, my own attitude to risk is, is I'm you know pretty liberal when it comes to risk. But at the moment, no, I probably wouldn't fly to Miami and – I would like many people, many of our readers, many people I've spoken to would probably do cruising closer to home for a while. Because I think when all this began, the biggest issue people seem to have was not getting sick, it was getting stuck. Yeah. Yes. And I think if you if if I'm cruising in Europe and if something were to go wrong, I could get the train home. If I'm cruising in Asia or if I'm cruising in the Caribbean or whatever, for me, that's a much longer and potentially more difficult way to get home. So I think this whole thing about cruising closer to home will be the way we come back. So for you over there, I mean, you'll be doing all your- um, What do you think, cruise, Sue, yeah. about the cruise, the cruise to nowhere idea? You know, for instance, I'll give an example, yeah? If I saw a cruise come up from Southampton, yeah? yeah. For, for instance, on the new Iona, which looks an incredible ship, it's a massive yeah. ship, yeah? And they're doing the Canary Island cruises. So if they were gonna do a winter cruise on the Iona from Southampton, and just simply cruise around the Canary Islands, you know, not stop at any of the ports and come back and have some wonderful winter sun, I would jump on that ship, the cruise to nowhere. I think personally I do a short cruise to nowhere. I'm not sure I would want to do a two-week. I mean, to the Canary Islands and back, there'll be like a 10-day, mm. two-week. That's a yeah. long time not to get off the ship. Um, but I would certainly do – I mean, there is – you know, they're around Britain – possibilities for later in the year and when the weather won't be so good. And I would do that. Anything with scenic cruising, I mean, the Herty Gruten did a um, cruise for Germans from Hamburg all the way to the North Cape of Norway and back, not getting off the ship, all the way whoop, and back. <laughs> and they don't get off the ship. They are allowed to go kayaking and on, on their ribs, on their Zodiacs, but they're not allowed to get off the ship. So that's a little bit different. Uh, would I go for two weeks to look at the Canary Islands if I was in the market for sunbathing, which I don't really do, mm. and all the entertainment on the ship, I mean, I do a few days definitely on a cruise to nowhere. But you talked about Herta Gerton, by the way, um, Sue, and yeah. Chidi, you probably want to talk about this as well. Um, oh, there yeah. we are. Oh my God. That was only in November. Look at it. Tell us about it. Oh, it was so beautiful. I was so lucky. It was, um, it was the naming of their first hybrid powered ship, um, the Roald Amundsen in Antarctica. And even that, I mean, I, I seem to attract disaster on ships and doom. And we flew, to, we flew to Santiago in Chile and there were riots. And they were saying, oh, we can't go anywhere. We can't get you down to Valparaiso to get on the ship because there were riots and curfews. I was like, oh, my God, you come all the way here. I've never been to Antarctica. Oh, Anyway, we got there. And uh, actually, that one's Greenland. Oh. I had a good year. <laughs> that Greenland as well. <laughs> I mean, that was just one of the most incredible moments on this ship. I mean, that's midnight. And the um, the we were just edging the, they edging through this ice which was beginning to form into solid ice and it was you could hear the ice cracking around the ship, and we were standing on our balcony when I took that picture and that that's the moon I and mean, it was just absolutely extraordinary it was the most incredible trip and you know what annoyed me about that is I it was a long repositioning cruise all down the coast of Chile and we had three days in Antarctica 
And I just thought, I've always been so desperate to go to Antarctica. And people said, oh, don't waste your time. You should go to South Georgia and you should do other bits and go to other, make it a longer trip. And I thought, I'm just so grateful to be here. It was incredible and it was so beautiful. And for anyone who has a chance to go to Antarctica, even on a short trip, do it. Don't listen to people who say you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to take in the Falklands. It's like, I'll go back. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, but you need to come to Minnesota then. If you like what, it, no, this is not a- like Ice and, yeah, yeah. Come true. and see our Northern Lights and come and enjoy. You, are, you always go to these destinations that are far and extreme and everything, but you know, Minneapolis is a city of, the Minneapolis surroundings, four million people, and I'm 300 miles away from that. I know I don't want to see four million people though. I want to see no but, people. No, 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 but I mean, but you can fly oh, in. It's a giant terminal and everything, and then come and come yeah. and show you the northern lights and show you our kind of hospitality. Like, oh, I'll be there for that. Yep, absolutely. Be in yep. Fox there, Sue. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Come in. Welcome. Come visit. <laughs> we will show you the time of your life. I promise. Well. Well, Chile, obviously, I can't tell the difference between Antarctica and Greenland <laughs> because it's kind of snow. Snow is snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Greenland. That's Greenland. Yeah. And Greenland. That's yeah. Greenland. Oh, I'm glad about that. Greenland. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, Greenland, Greenland was um, <coughs> an adventure because I went with um, with um, G Adventures and who specialize in. Um, you know, or they, they're very friendly to solo cruises, and I went on my own. And um, it was a two-week trip. It was a long trip. And, um, yeah, I made lots of friends. I mean, 30% of people on those trips go alone. Why can I not see you guys on the screen, by the way? Oh, there you are. You just I'm, I'm showing you close up, Sue. Don't Sorry. do that. You're putting me <laughs> off. And look at the pictures <laughs> behind on the wall. Those are mostly from that trip. So, anyway, so 30% of the passengers on this ship were on their own. So we had a blast. We, I mean, the, the the solo tables on the in the dining room were always the noisiest, and and you you know you they sign you up for hiking groups every day, and lots of us would kind of group together and say, yeah, we're going to do this hike, we're going to do that hike, and it was oh, it was just it was a fabulous trip, and it it's I mean it's quite a it's quite a commitment. To, I mean, cruising for solos, I mean, it is quite a commitment to sign up for a two week trip by yourself thinking, who will I meet? Will I get on with anyone? Will they all be couples or whatever? But that was a blast. Well, do, you know, do you know something, Sue? That's something that we do, Cruises for Solo. That's where I met John, you know, and we often cruise on the Norwegian Epic, which has got the most solo cabins out of any ship. Oh, it's got the and studios, hasn't it? It's got the studios. Now, yeah. I'll give an example. When you do cruise solo for the first time, you're a little bit nervous. You're yeah. thinking, you know, who, as you said, who am I going to meet? Are there going to be other solos on there? And with Norwegian Cruise Line, for instance, they have the studio lounge. Yeah. And then they organized things to do. Now, this was our group that we met in the transatlantic on the Norwegian Epic. <laughs> Hang on, where are you? Where are you? I I'm <laughs> look behind in the white jacket to the right hand side. Oh, yeah, with the big with the green shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah that, that's me. Very now, that's an, so that's an example of when yeah. you do cruise solo, you're nervous about doing it for the first time, but you get to meet so many people. Yes, you do, yeah. You know? and, yeah. and that's why we absolutely love it, isn't it, John? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's 189 single cabins in that cluster on yeah. the Epic, and that that's about what the group was every night. I mean, not everybody partakes in the uh -huh. events, but that's about the group. It would change. Some people be in and out. I'd go and have dinner with other friends and other things, different nights, but that was about how big the group was each night. That's a huge group on a big ship. That's a huge group. Well, we had, we had our own cruise director. We had a gentleman <laughs> that, that that just was assigned to us, and he brought us to. Uh, well, they they give the uh, the upper. What's the what's the, the the what's the high cabins called? Pete, help me. Which one, sorry, John? The the the, the expensive cabins up in the top of the epic. What are they called? Haven. The Haven. Yeah, yeah. the Haven gets the premier seats in the shows, and then we get the seats right behind them. Nice. They reserve those for us, and so they usher us into those seats before any show starts. Um, they have dinner reservations for us and all the reserved restaurants. Of course, if you either have to buy it or it's part of your package, but we, we sit together in the reserved restaurants. Um, anything like that that you can think of we have um, in that case why does norwegian not pr promote itself more as a, a solo friendly line because i've never heard that kind of story about it because it's full it's full all the time okay. the, day, the day that ship opens those cabins get full 
Because <laughs> is, is that just the Epic or is that all of their ships? They, they're no. in a couple of them right now. Now, the, uh, their big ships have the solo cabins, so yeah, yeah, the big yeah ships I know. have the solo the cabins, cabin, and yeah. they have these. Just the biggest thing about Norwegian Cruise Line is it's got the studio lounge. Yeah, it's a private area where we can go in. It's got the best coffee machine on the ship, first Ooh. of all. Yeah, which free. is great. It's free. it's free, and it's free. Yeah, and that's where we meet up, and we meet up, and that's where we have our meetings. And they, Norwegian Cruise Line, do that really well. So I'm amazed that you, you know they they do need to promote that. To be honest, with they you do more. because I mean I've been no. on. Don't, don't trips, but never to have that experience. Don't yeah. tell anybody. Don't <laughs> erase, the secret. erase this part of the show. Don't <laughs> tell anybody. I went on Encore and I did the um the go-kart track. Yeah. Which was amazing. And also the virtual reality games. Oh my god, that was incredible. So I was on the Encore. I did the inaugural at, uh, transatlantic on the Encore. Oh from well they were... to New York. Yeah. And they the go-kart track wasn't opened up until we got into New York. I have to, I wish I had my GoPro on my head. They wouldn't allow <laughs> me to have it, yeah? Because I, we went under the famous bridge in New York and I was on the go-kart. Oh my God. And I'm driving my go-kart and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> under this bridge in New York. And the most wow. incredible thing about that ship, that particular journey was the Encore met the escape at the Statue of Liberty like this going opposite ways at the wow. Statue of Liberty at sunset. Now, Sue, you like your sunsets, yeah? Always. Gin and tonic hour. <laughs> what are you about the show? <laughs> oh, God. What Emily am I says, doing? Pete loves the coffee machine. That's what Emily says, yeah. I absolutely. love the coffee machine, too. Yeah, so that's the Norwegian cruise line. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's the bigger ships do it. We're going to go on the Dawn in Venice, so that's a smaller ship, so it doesn't have the studio lounge. But then yeah. we're going to grab Chile for the first time on the Norwegian Epic, and hopefully, I gotta, John. I gotta go too. I gotta. Oh, be we're gonna put. We're gonna put. To go. We're gonna make. Go we're gonna make do on the Dawn. We're gonna have a group. We're gonna put a group together on the Dawn. Guaranteed. Yeah, Sue, you should come on the Epic for that one. That'd be a great thing, and you know, you can talk about us. Just don't publish it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so what are your favorite, what's your favorite ships and, you know, your favorite cruises? Oh. I know Chili's got lots of questions to ask us well on that one. She, she, what are your favorite? Pete, she can't tell. She can't say that. I, 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 can't, I can't give you one answer. I have to have, <laughs> have choices. So. Please list your favorites in that case. <laughs> like that. It's really putting me off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll go back to normal, Sue. How's that? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm, favorites. Okay. Big ships or small ships? I would say both. Okay. Um, I love the Queen Mary 2. I love it because I've done a few crossings and I've done some very special crossings. And I was very, very, very lucky to get on their last themed jazz cruise where we sailed across the Atlantic with Gregory Porter. Uh -huh. who I have. And um, we went to two gigs because it was so rough. They had to abandon the first gig. So we got the second gig for free. And then I got to interview him and he sang to me. And I still have the recording on my phone. And I love the Mary. I mean, I just lo I love I love wild, rough sea. As you can tell, I like I, <laughs> I like extreme places. So that was amazing. Um, small ships, I like um, I like Star Clippers. I like sailing ships. Um, Star Clippers is pretty. I've been on about twenty five of those, and they're wild and random, and they're fun. That's Aqua Blue. Now that I did this year, that was that was one of the most incredible trips ever. And that's a small ship that um, used to belong to the British Navy and it's been converted into a luxury motor yacht. And we went to, I went to Raja Ampat, which is, again, it's this kind of place you see pictures of and you think, oh my God, it's on my bucket list, I have to go. And it was so beautiful. And the snorkeling and everything there and the food, oh, it was amazing. I also like Herty Gruten, which I've talked about a bit, who took me to Antarctica for the first time on their battery powered ship, which I like very much. Um, I love celebrity ships. I've got many, many favourites here. So <laughs> you're probably bored by my favourites now, aren't you? No, no. I love, I love, I love celebrity, and you know, Edge was amazing, and yeah. So I'm, you know, I like a mixture, but I like, I like big open spaces. So anything that can take me anywhere wild, and also river cruising. I know you guys are more ocean, but I'm a big fan of river cruising, and there've been many adventures on the rivers. So. So yes, Chile. I, I know, I know we, you're dying to ask, aren't you? We have <laughs> something in common. We both have had have a hurricane story. Oh yes, 
from <laughs> cruising. Mine was with Dennis, which was 10 days before Katrina hit New Orleans. Okay, yeah, I was stuck yeah. out in the middle of, of the uh, Caribbean when Dennis hit. And we actually got two free days out at sea. Tell us your hurricane well, story. Hang on a minute. Was was it rough for you in, in Dennis and out at sea? What was it like? Yeah, yeah it was okay. <laughs> you know, a little rough, but not, I mean, we didn't hit, We they sailed away from the massive part of the storm. And we, we got two free days out of it. Well, I got... I got no days. <laughs> I was supposed to join. It's a, there's a small British cruise line called Noble Caledonia. And it was supposed to be my first ever trip to Cuba, which was obviously a massive bucket list. And we were to join the ship in Nassau and then sail to Havana and then do around Cuba. So we flew into Nassau, um, got there. The ship had already left empty because the hurricane was coming. This is Hurricane Sandy. So this was in 2012. And they were fantastic. And they said, right, we're going to fly you to um, Havana skip the hurricane, you're going to join the ship there, and then Havana closed. Meanwhile, the ship in the middle of the sea with no crew or skeleton crew, and then they said, right, we're going to put you up in the, um, what, I think it's changed name now, what was then the Nassau Sheraton, and um, ride out the storm and then fly you to Cuba to rejoin the ship. But uh, for me, it didn't happen, sadly, because the storm took three days to go over the Bahamas. And this is one time where I had gone on my own, and I was... I mean, everyone else was a couple and I felt a bit, not scared, but just a bit lonely because everyone else was on the ground floor where it was kind of solid. I was on the top floor alone and I couldn't move on. <laughs> Every time. I mean, and, and the, the whole of the lobby of the Nassau Sheraton was um, packed with people who had taken refuge and they brought their dogs and their kids and their nannies and the bar ran dry, the Wi-Fi ran out, the storms raging outside. And every time I wanted to go back to my room, I had to go all the way up the stairs and sit there and listen to this sound like a train running over the room. I mean, it was really interesting. And funnily enough, there was an NCL ship that left um, Nassau with passengers on it. And it was the point where the reef um, that you could see from the hotel had become unrecognizable. The reef had disappeared. So it was just now massive waves breaking. And all I could see was the lights of this NCL ship heading and they, they were going to Miami. And I just, oh my God. And, Kind of glad I'm not on a ship. <laughs> anyway, I had to abandon that trip because it was so delayed. But it was it was really interesting because all the lectures and things they were meant to do on the ship, they actually did in a room in the hotels. So talking about the wildlife of Cuba and the history and in a room in the hotel. But yeah, I had to fly home because I had another trip to go on. But yeah, it was it was interesting. It was kind of a bucket list thing to be in a hurricane, but maybe not on a ship. So you were very brave. I was uh, I was supposed to be in Cuba last fall. Oh. Uh, as actually uh, my first solo cruise. I've I've cruised for years uh, w with a partner, and uh, this was my first solo cruise was going to be going to uh, Cuba on the Norwegian Sun. So that, of course, got uh, stepped on by politics. You were robbed. Yeah. Robbed. Uh, one robbed. of uh, one of our favorite uh, uh, audience folk, Brenda from Norway. Uh, likes um, the Finmarken, if I'm saying um, it right. Finmarken. Have you been on the Finmarken? I have actually, yes. The Finmarken was where I had my amazing Northern Lights experience. So nice. many years, well, No, not many years ago, a few years ago, where I had um, I had to make a film for a website, and they said, we're only going to um, pay you to do this story if you see the Northern Lights, and it snowed for the whole trip. So there was no Northern Lights. And on the very last night... Um, I can't remember what port it was. It was way up in the north. And I paid for a, a, a snowmobiling excursion where you would snowmobile over the hills and then join the ship at the next port, thinking, what the hell? You know, I just bought this small, very primitive video camera. I had no idea how to use it. Anyway, and we're bombing over these hills on these snowmobiles. And suddenly the guide said, ah, look, 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 look. And there's these incredible northern lights all over the sky. And obviously I was too hysterical with excitement to make a film. So the story never appeared. <laughs> it was, um, but yeah, it was. Oh, I love that. I'll never forget that ship, and I'll never forget that trip. It was amazing. And that's the one. The Finmarken is the one that set sail last two weeks ago with the uh -huh. first passenger. So effectively, the first post-COVID ship to get going again. Right. So, right. do you get to enjoy the cruises, or are you know are you busy working? You know, do you, you know do you have deadlines to meet? Oh, both. Time? Both. Yes. Any anyone who ever cruises with me will laugh at how I'm. I mean, 50% of the cruise is spent ranting about the internet. 
and how I can't get online <laughs> <laughs> and how I can't download anything and how I can't research anything. And then the rest is spent in the bar. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah. That sounds like me. <laughs> so, Chili, tell Sue like, what your normal bar bill used to be when you were cruising. Oh, I, I've I've gone over a thousand dollars a week with the bar bill, <laughs> several Absolutely. several cruises, and that's just chili. Yeah, I was going to say for you and all your closest friends, or uh, well, but, but Sue, do you do you get treated? I mean, do they all know? For instance, the journalist, cruise editor, the Sunday Times. That's a fantastic. You know, do they know these no. cruise lines that you do you you go in incognito? Do you do they not know that no, you no, work for Sunday Times? Sometimes they know and. But we make it very clear, and the, and the part of the deal with the Sunday Times is always that it will be an objective review, always. Even if it's free? And it does not always go well. And, um, I mean, there have been – there was one last year that went very badly, in fact, but um, which we did a news piece on. So, no, they they, they do accept that. But um, And sometimes the cruise line might know, but it never gets um, – filters down to the crew, so they wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. But no, we, we make it very clear that it's an objective review. But you know, we have to we have to inform our readers. They they don't want a piece of puff. They want to know what it's going to be like. So yeah, exactly. And I guess you've got to produce something every week for your readers every Sunday. Is that correct? No, no, no. We don't we don't cover cruising every Sunday. We cover cruising okay. in the news when there's a story. I mean, I mean, but you know, life was no. different last year. Until the beginning of this year, life was very different. We had so, a lot lined up. So. I've got to ask this question. I know Chile was going to ask it as well. He just took it he, and he announced that he was going to steal it from you. That's yeah, all right. I am. Um, He's like the, that. The foreign, oh, the, right. <laughs> the foreign Commonwealth Office in the UK now announcing that they don't, they recommend that we don't go cruising. Yeah. Well. And also the ITV documentary that was on last week. Which was in, so negative about cruising. I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts on those? Well, I mean, for clarity, you, everybody knows I was in that documentary. If that's the one you're referring to, billion yes, pounds yes. cruises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, they came to interview me at the beginning of lockdown here, so early April. And it, first of all, the documentary was supposed to be a narrative of the first six weeks of the pandemic. And it was the beginning of the pandemic then. So all I could, all I did was narrate the thing and say, this is what happened. I didn't say this was what I thought or anything. And then it came out, I mean, like last week. So yeah, I mean, I'm there as a narrator. I'm not there as a, a ranting person saying everything was terrible because I think the cruise lines tried incredibly hard to cope with everything. I think they, they I think they really, I mean, I've got friends who've been stuck on ships as crew and have, they say that the cruise lines have gone out of their way to try and get these people home. So, and then set the second issue, the FCO thing, I think it's a bit like the quarantine we had here. I think it's kind of a random blanket failure to understand of anything. I mean, for example, if you wanted to go on a luxury barge cruise in France with eight people on the barge, you are advised not to go. Very different from a 6,000 passenger ship that's actually not sailing till the autumn anyway. So, you know, there's not a lot going at the moment. There, there are bits and pieces going that Brits could go on and they are being advised not to. I am going to cruise in August and hopefully again in September and I'll probably take the risk and oh, I shouldn't say this, go without insurance. But I mean, if the cruise line will have me, but I think it's ill advised. And I think and I have written to the Foreign Office and said, I think you need to start distinguishing between a very kind of obviously safe cruise, like a river cruise in one country in France, where all you do is go to bits of France, get there on the train, get home on the train, and that, and a, and a you know, potentially big ship, but there, there are no big ships going anyway. So I think, I think I'm upset by the foreign office advice, but I think they will have changed their minds when they see all the new protocols that come out, because they are going to be so amazing and so strict. So, yeah, I don't know what your passengers or your guests are thinking, but... Yeah, it's, it's a question that it comes up because, obviously, with um, with the the Foreign Office's announcement, a lot of questions are over insurance. Now, you know, if you do go yeah, on a cruise probably. ship, where does the insurance go? And that's one of the biggest worries. And, yeah. you know, and why are they announcing it now when cruises, cruise ships, the cruise lines have decided 
themselves, they're not cruising anywhere really. So why they suddenly announced this after they did they said nothing for four months? And, that, so I, and think they, I think we're confused, Sue. I yeah, would say. everyone's confused. Everybody wants a deadline for this. Everybody wants a review date, and and that's the problem that they're announcing it now, which is when people are going to be booking. So um, people need to be having the confidence now to book. I mean, even mm. for like for later this year. And some agents are saying, well, we'll be lucky to get anything for this year and we'll be grateful for next year. But I think I think there should be a reason to book for later this year. And I think once the all the new protocols have been agreed, and I think one of the big issues has been a lack of communication, but I know how hard they're all working. So once once it's been announced and once people actually understand what cruise ships are going to do, they will be confident to cruise. And then hopefully the Foreign Office will be persuaded. Because frankly, I honestly don't think they know anything no. about cruising no. they just think oh cruising big ships blah blah coronavirus blah blah but not anything about the diversity that cruising offers sorry chili to grab that question off you but i wanted to put it out there very quickly <laughs> chili uh, i have to ask one more silly question oh, God. about a burning barbecue and a shocking hot tub <laughs> we're going back a long way now <laughs> Well, no, I was just thinking of, um, I was thinking of my stories of cruising for solos or cruising with a, you know, with a, with a girlfriend or with a mate rather than with a partner where, where you, your experience of the ship is very different. And obviously I've been on lots of ships and I will not be naming the cruise line. It no longer exists anyway, but yes, it was, if people ever say, what was your most insane cruise? It has to have been this, um, gorgeous itinerary around the South of India. I mean, absolutely stunning and I love India so I really wanted to go but the ship was very old and hadn't quite been thought through and um, I arrived there with a girlfriend who was very flamboyant and a, a sort of PR person anyway so she was able to deal with the passengers who were very distressed by the time we got there um, and the aircon had all broken down and all these people were sleeping on the deck and this is in India it's really really hot and um, the, <laughs> the, uh, the there was a barbecue on deck which caught fire and there was a hot tub, um, which gave everyone electric shocks. <laughs> and uh, there was, and then, and, and they, I mean, I'm, I'm loving, I love India with a passion and I love cruising in India. And I have cruised there since, just to say. But there was a night where all the booze got impounded by the customs of some random state we were going through where they said, no, nope, no alcohol tonight. We're like, <laughs> where's the booze? I mean, on the upside, we went to a and we um well, we did some fun stuff but yeah it was i mean you've got to think people have made this their bucket list they've um paid a lot of money they've gone on this trip and i mean i have to confess for full disclosure it was a work trip i took a girlfriend and so we we were there we weren't paying and all the passengers were very upset when we got there and my friend just set up this kind of salon on deck and got beer in and people would come and sit one by one and say, oh, I want my money back and I'm so unhappy and I'm living on deck and the hairdryer isn't working and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it was, uh... and then she, my friend got, got conned by an Ayurvedic salesman who was selling this hair gel <laughs> and we were sharing a cabin and, and suddenly I was like, that was probably John. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get you. It wasn't from, it wasn't from my, Minnesota. I promise. It, was it won't be like that in Minnesota. I'm so very sorry. I will get your own money back tomorrow. <laughs> oh, wow. I saw some beautiful places on that trip, but yeah, the passengers were very unhappy and, and, and quite rightly so. And yeah, it was um, sometimes a ship's a little bit too old to bring into service to make it a new cruise line because the whole ship's kind of sailing listing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> People were getting off in every port saying, I've had enough. <laughs> That's, that's such a great question, Chile. And I'll, just to add to that question, Sue, I just um, can you tell us about the cruise? You're on a cruise ship here when someone came up and actually polished your sunglasses for you. Oh, yes. Yes, I can. Well, <laughs> more than once, actually. Really? <laughs> you me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was, um, well, a few, actually. No, Sea, sea Dream Yacht Club, I have to say, I, yeah. I was sort of lying there snoring probably on deck and and, and a, a gorgeous young man said, Ms. Bryant, may I polish your sunglasses? And I was like, why are they dirty? Do you have to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But yeah, then I realized it was like part of the service. It wasn't judging me on my smeared sunglasses. 
What an opening line. Hey, may I polish your sunglasses for you? Yes, you're right. Maybe he wasn't even a crew. Yeah, member. yeah. He, went up he, he, he wasn't the same guy that was found in your bed, was it? Too by no. chance? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I'm going to use that in the epic. I'm telling you, man. Hey, <clears throat> mind if I polish your sunglasses? You have to know the person's <laughs> name. You have to make it personal. Oh, okay. You have to say hello, Ms. Whatever. And Miss Worthington, may I polish your sunglasses? And, and I have a drink in your hand as well. I know you'd like a gin and tonic at 11 o'clock in the morning. So, And can I polish your sunglasses? That's what you have to do. Yeah. It's 5 o'clock. I've got my cherry with me. Yeah, well, I've still got my rosé going here. So, But, yeah, so, yeah, it was it was lovely. It was a, wow. It was a you, your favourite port of call. Ah, I knew that one would come. I knew it. I know. Again, I don't. I can't have one. I can't have any one. Nobody has only one, do they? So I made a list. <laughs> well, not port. I mean places. Um, yeah. Antarctica. No one port, but I mean just mind blowing. Raja Ampat, where the aqua blue picture was, which um, I went with my partner on that trip, and we were on a kayak again. I like kayaking, and I was thinking to myself, I've never been anywhere so beautiful. And he suddenly said. I've never been anywhere so beautiful. I was just like amazing, a stunning place with these great big cliffs falling into the sea and you can see the fish under the water and, and that, that was amazing. Um, sea of Cortez, because I love wildlife and that was the, the, um, the whales and the dolphins, they're extraordinary in the desert and the Galapagos. And if you want a port of call, yeah, Venice, I love Venice. I don't care what people say that Venice is ruined, Venice is blah, blah, overcrowded, I love it. And I was sort of thinking, if you said to me, any itinerary around the Mediterranean, you know, what port would it have to include that would make you say, yes, I'll do it? And it would be Venice, always. Wow. So what's yours? Everyone else? You probably say this every week, don't you? Barcelona for me. Oh, I love Barcelona too. Yeah. Yeah. Barcelona is my favorite Barcelona. city, but I've never sailed to Europe. This will, Next year will be my first time cruising in Europe. So I'm still coming on that trip. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty. Mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a Caribbean guy. Oh well, that too. Ile de Sant, I love Betque. I love, and anywhere I can do water sports, I love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Cosimo. Cosimo for me, when my first cruise was on the Princess Emerald Princess, my oh. first ever cruise on the Emerald Princess actually, and they got no solo cabins on that at all. I ain't got a clue what I was doing, so, but I went to, I went to Cosimo, and when we stopped off there, I went to see the Mayan ruins in. They call it chicken pizza, chicken pizza, chicken pizza. Chicken pizza, one of the new seven wonders of the world. Yeah, yeah. that's and, on my bucket list. Well, I, I, it was crazy because to do this particular um, excursion, we had to take an hour, literally, to go across to the mainland. We had a two-hour journey on a coach. We had forty minutes only in <gasps> chicken pizza. Can you believe it? Forty no. minutes to go around, and then we did the same thing all the way back. And I cannot tell you how glad I did that. That's the most incredible. It's like once in a lifetime play. So Even for me, need for, 40 minutes. 40 minutes is all we had in chicken, chicken pizza, they call it. An incredible <laughs> place. So, yeah, that's that, that would be my place to say that. And as an old fat guy, I do participate in water sports. Yeah. Uh, my water sports uh, is uh, sitting on the beach and watching ladies in bikinis. <laughs> uh, and I call it a sport. So, <laughs> Chili. That's about as far as it gets. But Chili, now you got a new opening line. You know, hello, <laughs> hello, ma'am. May I polish your sunglasses? <laughs> and have you got yeah, any? No. Is there anywhere you haven't been that you really want to go to? So, actually, um, bits of Mexico that you were talking about. I've yeah. only ever cruised the Pacific side of Mexico, so yeah, I'd like to see a lot more of Central America. So I, who have hardly cruised at all, only only literally discovered cruising a few years ago, I've been somewhere you haven't. Oh, definitely. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 I recommend yeah. it, Sue. <laughs> oh, I'll be there. And also more, uh, yeah, definitely more um, expedition stuff, definitely more um, more Antarctica and more Galapagos. Oh, anywhere wild. I love it. Well, I hate to call this proceeding to an end, but our, oh my goodness. Our, our, we've that. always promised people we don't go over an hour and we're just right at the end of our hour. And Sue, I cannot thank you enough. I, this oh, has been you. wonderful. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I could keep talking forever, Chili. Like, where's, it, where's the hour gone? I don't know. I'm where's a crew for I could go on forever too. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap us up here, guys. So for John and Pete, 
and me from Virginia. Sue, thank you again. We'll see you guys next time. Love you guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.